Okay, Floridians, you better have your rods rigged for this week's species because they're fun to fight with hues of greens, yellows, and blues, sometimes caught in schools, and on the grill, they'll make you drool. One of my favorite offshore fish to catch, we're talking about dolphin, dorado, mahi, whichever you prefer, here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, powered by Harbor Trucks and presented by Yamaha. Ladies and gents, we welcome you to join us for a very special show, the Florida Insider Fishing Report Crossover Night with Sportsman's Adventures. We are celebrating 25 years of Sportsman Adventures and tonight marking our 400th episode of the Florida Insider Fishing Report. High five. Oh yeah, so get your, ready for your regional reports along with some special guests, a fun-filled live audience, and definitely some laughs with blasts from the past. Right, Rick? This is crazy. Bree, think about this. <laughs> 15 years ago, we developed this show, and yep. here we are 400 episodes later, which if you add up all the repeats, 1,600 of them. That's, That's a, lot a lot of, of TV time, Rick boy. and TV time for sure. All right, well, let's say hi to Dave at the CCA workbench. And what some people might not know is that Dave, as well as Captain Ron Houston, Jeff Page, Pat Deneen, and Mike Holiday, the OGs, have the been old, with us. The old guys, yes, correct. Yes, since the very beginning. Yes. Dave, it, congrats. You know, 1,600 uh, airings. That's a huge number. How many uh, products is that? Uh, a lot. I'm a journalism major. <laughs> he doesn't do math. I don't do math, but we did. I was, you know, 2,000. Without the you know repeats, but 2,000 products I've wow. done on this show. How about 6,400 if you count the repeats? Well, there you go. <laughs> See, that's why you're the boss giving me the money. This is true. <laughs> All right. Well, we love you, Dave. We have a few of our prize captains in the house tonight giving the reports live. And starting us off is Captain Randy Tao from the Garmin Keys region. Show us what season looks like, Captain. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, here in the Garmin Keys region, the dolphin are just starting to show up right now. 600 to 1200 feet has kind of been the zone. And what you want to look for is the same typical signs, birds, weeds, and this is all going to indicate where dolphin might be. And it's really up to you to pay attention when you're running out because you're going to see this and you don't want to pass it by. You want to stop and you want to look around, hopefully uh, put out a couple of lures or ballyhoos. And I like to troll around till I find them. And then another key part of this is being prepared. Having your rods rigged and ready, you can't be tying hooks on or putting leaders on when you're in a school of dolphin. You want to be ready to go so when that school gets behind your boat, you can cast to them and you can catch them. And maybe you'll make your day right then and go back home because you've had a great day. The dolphin right now are anywhere from just over slot size, which is 20 inches, to some 15 to 20 pounders. Not the real big ones that we're going to see later, but certainly some 20 pound dolphin is a nice dolphin. And I was talking to Captain James Simsick with Spear Crazy Charters at a Marathon, who's been finding some real good dolphin fishing around his neck of the woods. And I've got a photo of his catch the other day at Captain Hooks. Dang. And I also have a photo of Brandy Metz with her dolphin fishing with Captain Davy Jones on his boat, the Munster, out of the square grouper in Isla Mirada. That was some pretty fish. Randy, what else you got for us offshore? Mutton snappers right now are biting. They're biting on the edge of the reef. Guys are catching them while they're yellowtailing. And I like to fish them in a little deeper water where I can get out and drift. I like to cover some ground. I use a, a, a braided rod with uh, enough lead to get to the bottom and a long leader. The long leader's been key to getting good bites from mutton snappers. I like to use ballyhoo, cigar minnows, pilchards, baits like that really work well. And a VMC hook like a 6-0 for ballyhoos works really well for me. Captain Brian Cohn is normally our dolphin expert and he's got a boat called the Contagious out of Robbie's Marina. If you're a fish, you got a problem with him because if he's looking for you, he's gonna catch you and it's not gonna be a good day for you. I've got a picture of one of his big mutton snappers, Jim wow. Casto, that caught the other day. Nice, let's go inshore, Bubba. Bone fishing, you know, this time of year, a lot of guys will go bone fishing, especially when it's windy. There's several ways to do this. You can sight cast, you can blind fish, which I call gentleman fishing. You anchor the boat in an area where you think the bonefish are going to be, cast a couple of shrimp out, you get a bite, wind them in. It's really kind of the beginner sport of bone fishing. And then work your way up to polling and casting and all of that technical stuff because you're going to see a lot more than you're going to catch when you're sight fishing. That's just the nature of that uh, gray ghost. And sometimes they're real easy to find. Sometimes you, you spend all day trying to look for something that's not there. 
I've got a photo of seven-year-old Jacob from Fort Lauderdale. It was his birthday a couple of weekends ago, <laughs> and he caught his first bonefish. Awesome. That is Happy awesome. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Go ahead, Randy. Permit? The, the permit fishing, we, we have them on the edges of the flats, which are just outside the, the ocean side uh, shorelines. And also, some of the deeper wrecks are holding some nice schools of permit, big schools. You might pull up to a wreck, and there's 100 fish there. Middle of the day, you've got the best visibility where you can see them flashing, and you can see them on top. And if you throw a live crab on a quarter ounce jig head, you're probably going to get a bite from them. They're pretty receptive when you do find them. And I've got a photo from this past weekend in the ABC Backcountry Tournament with Bernard Paul Huss and his angler, Mike Bruner, with a doubleheader permit they caught. And I also have a picture of Andy Cohn, which happened to be Brian Cohn's son, right. catching his first permit. And I also want to say, Rick, congratulations on 400 episodes with the Florida Insider. I'm very, very happy and fortunate to be a part of it in 25 years of Sportsman's Adventure. You've done an awesome job. Well, thanks, bub. We've we've done an awesome job together. We started guiding in exactly the same year, and thank you very, very much for that support. But more importantly, we got some hot spots to read from the Garmin's Florida Keys region, so let's go ahead and check them out. Randy says that inshore you might want to go tarpon fishing. The fly fishermen look for them on the ocean side flats for migrating fish going south. And then for the bait fishermen, you want to try Long Key Bridge, Seven Mile or Bay Honda Bridges for the best results. And then offshore, dolphin, look for the birds in the weeds in 600 to 1,000 feet of water. And once you find them, start fishing and be patient and make sure you have all your rods ready. Right, Bree? Right. All right, let's stay in the Keys for a little bit longer because really, who wants to ever leave and see what tournaments are going on? All right, let's it. do it. Okay. This weekend's Tom Thumb Marathon Offshore Bull and Cow Dolphin Tournament, set for Friday through Sunday, features a guaranteed grand prize of $10,000 to the team that catches the largest bull and cow dolphin combined. At the Mother's Day Dolphin Tournament, May 10th to the 11th in Marathon, anglers are to compete for the heaviest dolphin and over $1,000 in cash prizes. Tax deductible registration fees benefit Habitat for Humanity of the Middle Keys. Special flies, accurate casts, and a bit of luck are the recipe for winning the Loop, the Loop Golden Fly Invitational Tarpon Tournament May 19th through the 22nd in Isla Mirada. Anglers must use a tournament furnished tippet not greater than 16 pound test. At the Skipper's Dolphin Tournament, May 31st to June 1st in Key Largo, prize monies are given the top six teams, including $20,000 in cash to the first place team. You can find information on all Florida Keys tournaments at flakeys.com. There's a lot going on. Boy, there. you're going to need a drink after all that. I'm going to need some water after all this. All right, let's move this show right along to the Discover let's Crystal do. River Northwest region to see what Captain Jeff Hageman has to tell us about this weekend's report. Give us something good, Hagalicious. Well, Dolphin, we've got them in my region, but of course you're going to have to make that run on my region. we got a long way to go to get to them. Um, in the summer months, most of the fish are going to be caught past that 70 foot of water. You want know, to keep your eyes out for weed lines, birds, bait, floating flotsam, all that stuff that holds dolphin. Um, the fish that are going to be in that 100 foot or less are usually going to be those chickens, and the big ones are going to be caught pretty far off the shelf in that five to 600 foot of water, you know, trolling. Uh, pink and white, blue and white, soft heads work well, with or without ballyhoo. Um, like Randy was just talking about earlier, uh, keeping a rod rigged when you get out past 70 feet is key. I keep a light spinning rod rigged with a quarter ounce jig head, uh, bucktail, or, or some kind of something that's going to go through and I can get out real quick and cast to them when I do see them. But right now, offshore in Crystal River, Captain Nick Warrington of High Octane Charters reports a good number of triple tail being spotted from Crystal River to Cedar Key around crab traps, weed lines, channel markers. Uh, once located, casting a live shrimp on a 3 out DMC circle hook is the key. If you got a tower boat and you're running along on these structures and spot them, um, if you don't have a tower, standing on a cooler or standing up on your leaning post will give you a little higher advantage to make them a little easier to spot. But once you see them, if you're on plane, keep moving past them, blow right by them, and slow down, make your turn, come back to them, put your trolling motor down, and make a nice quiet approach. Most of the fish right now have been averaging in that 14 to 20 inch range. And moving in shore, Captain Mario Costello, Tall Tail Charters out of the Plantation Inn on Crystal River, reports a really good snook bite right now around the mangrove shorelines in Crystal River and Homosassa. He's using a jerk bait and glow on a weedless five watt worm hook 
and he's working the potholes on the bottom half of the tide. These snook right now have been ranging in his region, or in Crystal River in that area, from 28 to 32 inches. And moving down to Tampa Bay, Captain Mike Anderson of Real Animals out of Tampa Bay reports a really good snook bite right now on the South Shore. He said it's been absolutely amazing. 40 to 50 fish mornings, all on my filters. Uh, and right now you want to fish the mangrove shorelines. That's been the best for snook on both sides of the tide, and they were both productive. And moving over to Ozona, Captain Jimmy Huddleston of Captain Hud Charters reports a good snook bite right now on Tarpon Springs on the outgoing tide. Live sardines has been the bait of choice. 25-pound fluorocarbon leader in a three-out circle hook, free-lined or under a float. And Captain Mike sent in this photo of some nice snook. He averaged out over there when he was blowing them up on the other side of the bay. Yeah. All right, what else you got for me, bub? Uh, well, the redfish just started moving in before I moved down to Boca Grande, and we started getting some of those upper slot fish um, in the south end of the bay. Most of the fish kind of stayed up in the north part of the bay this year, and they're just starting to trickle down to the south part of the bay. Um, recent trips, we are catching those fish in that 27 to 34 inch, and we caught quite a bit of them, and they were mostly around mullet schools, and cut bait was the key. And I got a photo here of some nice redfish we caught. Oh, look good. All right, thanks for the report. I got a couple what? throwbacks before we go too far. Oh, um, a couple hey. of photos of us. <laughs> Here we go. On one of my favorite trips with you. And yeah. uh, we were back in Flamingo. We caught snook, redfish, tarpon, all on jig heads, with shrimp. I've never done anything like that in my life. I had a blast with you. I'm honored to be a part of the show and 400 episodes. Congratulations, man. All right, bub. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the anytime sunscreen, mosquito and repellent hotspots from the northwest region. Hag says that in shore, we want to go snook fishing. They are in the transition, moving from the wintertime to the summertime haunts. Use sardines, pinfish, free lined or under a cork. And then offshore, mangrove snappers. They are in high relief structures in the lower half of his region in 25 to 60 feet of water. I'm loving all these throwback photos. I don't oh, know about you. Oh, I just you. can't wait for the ones with the shorty shorts. Oh, oh those boy. are good. Those are real good. All right, coming up, we're taking a look back at 25 years of Sportsman Adventures and sharing some special moments with our friends from Yamaha. So stay hooked here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Oh, thanks. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Harbor Trucks. Visit harbortrucks.com. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Contender Boats, always in the game. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fishing info, and channel surfing. And Daiquiri Deck, Sarasota's favorite place to meet. Titan and Titan XD Diesel from Harbor Trucks has America's best truck warranty, five years, 100,000 mile bumper to bumper, and can tow up to 12,000 pounds. Harbor Trucks has the largest selection of Titan XD and Titan in Florida starting at $29,000. Harbor Trucks is conveniently located halfway between Tampa and Naples. Harbor Trucks, the place to buy. Meet the water's lightest 25 horsepower four-stroke, the all-new Yamaha F25, the new standard in 25 horsepower portable four-strokes. At just 126 pounds, it's got the best power to weight ratio of any 25 horsepower four-stroke on the water. With performance that bests the previous Yamaha F25 and features like Yamaha's VTS for precise trolling speeds, batteryless EFI, built-in resting pads, and carry handles, it's the perfect portable power for small boats. As close as you're gonna get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left, there's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal.
amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. Welcome back, guys. We're celebrating big history-making things on the Florida Insider Fishing Report tonight. And along with our 400th episode, we're marking 25 years of Sportsman Adventures. Rick, you've been fishing your entire life, and half of that life has been filming Sportsman Adventures. Can you believe it? I can't. Years. It just seemed like we just got started the other day. It seemed like re realistically 12 years, but let's check it out. Let's check it out. Good. Now pop it right there. Pop it. That was a good take. That was a good take. All right. All right. These Key West Kingfish are out there great. Oh, yeah. Whoa, Ralph. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> hey, you go, buddy. <laughs> what a great day. All right. There he is, Scotty. Oh, 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 yeah, that's what it's It's in the water. Where'd he go? Oh, 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 I got rich, and then we got the wild Daddy, man. Daddy, I got in the tree. Colin. <laughs> no kidding, right in the tree. How's the chicken? Look, while you're over there catching that chicken, Daddy's over here catching this red fish. What do you think? <laughs> you can't be bothered. <laughs> Give me the red for chicken. <laughs> the red fish wants some chicken? Nope. Mr. Rabbit, what's up, your chicken? He doesn't want any chicken. He's a shrimp man. Yeah, you guys coming at me. Hey, Joe, you fish any of these Wahoo tournaments? No, sir, I do not, but Captain Matty has and has won several of them. I might have to start, though. Oh, Look at this. Easy, 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 easy. Come on, Danny. I Grab got the her, fish. Baby. That's a monster snook right there. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Hang on, hang on. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come, there he goes. There he goes. Watch this way. Watch look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Go, Blue Marley. Woohoo! Hey, watch out, oh, guys. Watch, watch out, out coming in. Oh, Woo! He got a headache on that. Look at him. He's like, what happened, Poppy? Oh, Woo! Oh. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Oh, ho, ho. You know, Dale, 25 years, I want to welcome you to the studio. Um, and 25 years, I've run a little boat, 25 horsepower, all the way up to the 425 that stands behind us. It's been a real good thrill, so thanks for coming. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here, Rick. You know, I want to tell you that uh, I've been with Yamaha 20 years. And over those years, um, we're very, very fortunate that Yamaha has become the brand that it has and it's grown. And that growth is a, is a result of really special relationships we have. Relationships with boat companies like Contender Boats and Maverick Boat Company and relationships with, um, um, relationships with people such as yourself that have done such a wonderful job helping us build awareness of our brand and build memories with um, fishermen across the country. And that comes from knowledge um, and experience of people like yourself that have helped teach people about the great sport and how fun the sport is and um, how uh, the right products can make a difference. Well, it's been, you know, the cool part is it's been an honor and to think about being able to field test. I'm one of the lucky guys. I get to go to the test center from time to time and get to play with toys that are a year from launch. That's right. And that to me is one of the funnest parts about promoting your product. Not only that, but using them in tournaments and being out front of everybody. It's a lot of pride that goes with that. It is, and you know, it, at the end of the day, it's as, as you go by your call sign, you know, Murphy's Law, and that's optimizing that time on the water and, um, and helping the public today really understand how special 
the water can be and the, and the lifetime of memories that can come out of um, fishing. And, um, and so it's, it's really wonderful how you teach uh, people across the nation how special this sport really is. Well, thank you for the 25 years. Bree, we got to go to another region, yes, so we do. That was take a very it away. Special message, Dale. Thank you. Captain Jimbo Thomas on the Thomas Flyer is synonymous with the Casa Vieja Southeast region, and he's always on top of his game, so you can be on top of yours. Let's hear our weekend report, Jimbo. You got it, Bree, and hello, Dave and Rick and everybody else in the studio. Well, you know, we're talking about dolphin, and here in the southeast region, we can find dolphin, mahi, dorado, whatever the heck you want to call them, but we do catch them throughout the year, and with the summer months, they're being recognized as dolphin season, but anybody can have a great day dolphin fishing at any given time of the year. The most consistent months are June, July, and August, and that's when most fishermen all head offshore and we look for weed lines, rips, color changes, floating debris, and any bird activity. And those are all great signs that dolphin could be in the area. Now the main fishing tactics when we're talk targeting dolphin are trolling with rig ballyhoo, flying fish also work very well, bonita strips, also small lures and feathers or you can run and gun, and that means you want to cover a lot of ground in search of the, that debris and signs of fish. Now the larger fish, they're usually in pairs or in small packs, while the smaller fish can usually be found in large schools. That's why we call them schoolies. Now aboard the Thomas Flyer, we like to have some live pilchers or cigar minnows in the bait well, and then we get some ballyhoo or we save our bonitas that we catch. We cut them into chunks. We have those chunks and those live baits ready to cast or pitch at the fish once we have located them. Now the typical tackle is light trolling outfits or medium to heavy spinning tackle. We rig them with 50 to 80 pound monofilament leader and use anywhere from 4.0 to 6.0 hooks depending on the baits that we're using. Or if you got bigger baits, you go with bigger hooks. Now the few dolphin that we've been catching in the last week or even the last couple of weeks have been anywhere from eight, 100 to 800 feet of water. And in the shallower depths, the dolphin that we're catching, they've been on live baits that we've had out under the kite intended for sailfish. And then in the deeper water, there have been a few frigate birds out there working, and they've been on top of these dolphins that are uh, chasing the flying fish. But it really has not been great by any means. But that bite should progressively pick up as we get more into June and July. Now, we got grouper, and as of yesterday, grouper season opened, and there should be plenty of hungry black grouper and gag grouper and red groupers out there waiting to be caught. Now, one of the best ways to put some grouper in the box is by trolling over the main reefs and patch reefs in anywhere from about 15 to 40 feet of water. Use Rapala magnums, like the Rapala 20s or 30s or even 40s, or you can use a double hook ballyhoo or a bonita strip and pull it behind a planer or even on a wire line outfit. So basically you want to get your bait down deep. Now with the lures, uh, typically if you troll anywhere over about four knots, they start going crazy. Any faster, they, it's just not working. But with the planer, you can go a little faster, you can cover more ground. So the speed's not that big of an issue, the groupers will get it. Now I wouldn't go with anything less than 50 pound tackle because you need something that's heavy enough to pull those fish away from the reef. Otherwise, they're going to get you rocked up. Now, out in the deeper water, black and gag, gag groupers can be found on good reef bottom and wrecks anywhere from 90 to 250 feet of water. A good live bait like a pinfish, blue runner, grunt, or speedo, those are all great bait choices. And you can also use jig and ballyhoo combos or butterfly jigs. If the current's light, you can anchor up and fish your bait really close to the uh, structure, lay the bait on the bottom, that gives those groupers time to think about eating. Otherwise, drift over the structure. And then on the reef, the sizes are in about the 8 to 15 pound range. Out in the deeper water, most of the fish are going to be in the 15 to 20 or even bigger size range. Now moving inshore, our tarpon report is pretty much repeated the last three weeks. There have been tarpon around the bridges and dock lights at night and also around the inlets. Around the bridges, look for those tarpon feeding on the shadow lines. And if you're fishing in the inlets or off the beaches, 
they've been out there on the outgoing tide, you want to use live mullet or crabs. And if that water's clear, you want to scale down to lighter leaders and smaller hooks. Uh, daytime also, some of these same fish are in and around the, uh, the bays and deeper holes in the uh, inner ICW. They're eating crabs and shrimp and swimming plugs and even flies. Now, moving really inshore, freshwater side, peacock, bass fishing has been excellent. In the urban canal and lake system in the south part of the region. Look for these peacocks in areas with clear water and current. You want to work uh, jigs, small jigs, half ounce, small uh, Rapala husky jerks or shad wraps and gold or chartreuse or live shiners and minnows. We'll work them around the canal drop-offs, bridge, bridge columns, and drainage pipes. And uh, these peacocks have been in the three to five pound range. And there's also been some largemouth bass and even the occasional snook mixed in. Thank you so much, Jimbo. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the r, &R tackle hotspots from the Southeast region. Jimbo says inshore catch and release tarpon. Look for them in the inlets and around the deeper holes in the ICW. In the evenings, fish with live mullet or crabs. And then offshore, <clears throat> fillet and release blackfin tunas. How about that, Brie? Fillet and release along <laughs> the edge of the Gulf Stream in 100 to 200 feet of water, fish with live pilchards, herrings, and sardines. Only Jimbo. Only Jimbo. Only Jimbo. All right, we're talking a lot about the past tonight, so let's talk about the future All right. and our Harbor Trucks giveaway. Harbor Trucks is partnered with Casa Vieja Lodge, and two lucky winners will get a three-day, four-night trip to fish in Guatemala with Rick and I at Casa Vieja Lodge. To enter, go to our website at FloridaInsiderFishingReport.com. It's going to be a great trip, like always, That's at right. Casa Vieja. Have, All you, right. have well, you entered into the trip? Oh, yeah. Okay. oh yeah, he goes, oh, oh yeah. We're, <laughs> we're headed to fish the Northeast and Central West regions next. So first we are talking with a very special friend from Contender Boats. So that move a muscle. We'll be right back here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Crossover night with Sportsman Adventures. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by PowerPull, Swift, Silent, Secure, Bass Assassin, and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventure. Garmin, join the club. Kubota, find a Kubota dealer near you at gokubota.com. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. Harbor Trucks has the largest selection of new and used car and truck inventory in Southwest Florida. Our used vehicle inventory goes through a 120 point inspection process performed by certified technicians. Exclusive to Florida Insider Fishing Report viewers is our peace of mind Harbor Truck warranty. If you don't see what you're looking for, give us a call and we can get it for you. Go to harbortrucks.com and click on the Florida Insider Fishing Report tab. Real Legends Performance Clothing. Everything you need to be comfortable on the water all day long. Keeps you cool, dry, and protected from the sun. Durable performance technology at an unbeatable value. Shop anytime or go to reallegends.com to find a Bell store near you. I'm a thousand miles from nowhere. And there's no place I'd rather be. Uh -huh. Well, welcome back. And as you can see, I have my friend and owner of Contender Boats, Joe Niebuhr. Joe, you know, in all of our 25 years together, we've taken family vacations. You got me in the water after I hadn't been in the water in 40 years. <laughs> I mean, so what, where are we going, bub? We got another 25 uh, in us? 100%. All 100%. Right. You know, Rick, it's been an amazing journey with you. Um, 
it was a, a one-stop shop for us for TV. This is it. We started with you. We're going to finish with you. And I'm going to tell you something. One thing I would really like to thank you for is getting us at Contender Boats involved in the CCA and Florida and fisheries conservation because it opened up our eyes to the things we could do to help the fishing community. And it would not have happened had you not come to me and said, you need to do this like you've done so many times before. And uh, it works. And thank you so much because we are passionate about our fisheries conservation support. And, uh, and we have it all to you. We have to all of it to thank you for it. Thank you. So, you know, I got a couple photos I want to oh, share with Lord. you. You know what? Look, here we are at uh -huh. the first CCA event when we actually launched Contenders Relationship with CCA, the CCA that's, Miami. That's correct. Look how good looking we were and good how Lord. young we were. And then when we went on our vacation, certainly mm -hmm. you had to spear us dinner because I really, I'm surprised I wasn't on your back. <laughs> and then we fished a lot <laughs> yeah, of tournaments did. together, won a lot of money. We've done a lot of wonderful things. Yeah. But more importantly, you know, uh -huh. the hunting. Yeah, man, that was, those were the days, son. They Alaska. Huge days. Yeah, we just know, were there six months ago. Thanks for the bacon grease. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a thing I worked out with your wife I know. to help try to get rid of you, you know, and you I knew we were being bear infested creeks yeah. and smeared a little bacon grease on your waders. On my waders. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, Thank you know. You. So, I want you to know, guys, it didn't work. No. He's still here and he's yeah. still my friend. And you know what, Bree? We got to go to another region before the tears start flowing. Okay, Captain Jeff Page is amongst the OGs who have been around since the very beginning and the Fantastic Four, as I like to call them. So, Page, give us the Star Tron Central West Region report that we love so much. All right. You know what? We may not be known for a strong dolphin bite here in the Star Tron Central West Region, but we have a decent number of dolphins show up in the summer and stay through fall, and it starts anywhere from 20 miles on out. Same pattern goes that you have anywhere else in the state. Look for debris, look for weed lines, look for birds working. You're going to find dolphins. Best way to catch them, free, free line, small filters or thread fins, or you can throw small plugs. The average dolphin is a little bit smaller over here, but don't be surprised while you're catching the smaller fish if a big bull or cow doesn't show up. Another pattern that happens a lot here is while guys are moving, from one wet to another, or one reef to another, the grouper fish, they come across a wad of dolphins sitting on some, some debris of some sort. So we do have them over here, and it's not a bad thing. And I have a photo tonight of Captain Ryan Ellis and Captain Randy Powell of Venice slinging one in the boat right off of Venice. Hey, Paige, tell me about the permit fishing, but your phone case oh. is echoing, so make sure you hold it close to your mouth, please. Oh. There you go. Go with ahead. Permit with the warm water temperature in the uh, in the big strong outgoing afternoon tide uh, into the Gulf for my days. The permit is going off the chain with fish being taken in as close as seven miles, but 11 to 20 miles seems to be the best number for big groups of 15 to 25 pound permit. The key Rick is having plenty of crabs. Don't go out there unless you got at least a half dozen to a dozen crabs. Like I said, you can dip your own crabs in the afternoon. Most of the inlets and passes on the outgoing tide. My friend Captain Jason Stock has been doing really well, dipping his own crabs at, at night and then going out the next day, using his rodan trolling motor to keep them on the wreck and the reef. And it's not uncommon. He puts out a couple free line and a couple with split shots. He's been usually getting double and triple hookups. Look for the permit action to continue as the water temperature just gets a little bit warmer. Got a photo tonight of Happy Client doing a triple permit release with Captain Jason Stock. All right, what Moving you got in shore? Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Okay. Rip, more bait is pushed into the bays from out in the Gulf. And uh, a lot of the deeper grass flats around Fort DeSoto over to Bishop Harbor, South Santa Marina are covered with uh, flashing and flickering glass minnows and red fins. That's the key. You want to find that bait flashing on the flat. You can set up a drift with the wind and throw artificials like saltwater assassins in the Houdini or the Mississippi Hippie pattern. Or if you like throwing topwater, a chrome topwater plug works real good. And you can throw corked free line filters or shrimp. And then also down south, the grass flats off KKs 
and Turtle Bay on the higher stages of the tide have been very productive. Got a photo tonight of Marcus Carter with Captain Travis Yackel out of Ruskin with a nice trout. And my last species, snook. All day, although the daytime snook fishing has been really good, Rick, Captain Dave Parmalu, a.k.a. the Mad Snooker, has been having a 40, 50 fish night almost every night fishing the intercoastal waterway from South Minnesota all the way down to Inglewood. His bait of choice has been silver mullet with live ladyfish and big hand-picked shrimp. He's also been throwing full tech inline swim bait, and he's been having really good success catching fish up to 40 inches. If you've never done a nighttime snook trip, I suggest you get in touch with Captain Dave. And it's also a great place that you can learn to throw your fly rod because you don't have to throw it so far up under the dock light. Small white clouds is all you need. Last photo tonight is John Jonas with a big trophy got with Captain Dave the other night. And then I do have another photo <laughs> that goes back to 2003 where it all began. You know, I'm proud. I've been on... Uh, it's been since 2002, it's different since 2003, and you and I have been winning Redfish tournaments in both weeks. All right, thanks for sharing that photo with everybody, Paige. It looks great. I remember the days. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Daiquiri Deck hotspots from the Central West region. He says offshore permit, the awesome bite on the wrecks and the reefs and 11 to 15 miles out of Anna Maria, south to Venice. Plenty of crabs flushing out of the passes on the afternoon outgoing tide. And then inshore, speckled trout, 16 to 20 inch trout are hitting on the flats off of Bishop Harbor, south to Rattlesnake Key. Try throwing saltwater assassin four inch sea shads in the violet moon pattern. Hey Tommy, you ever throw the violet moon pattern bass assassin? I haven't thrown that one, but I've thrown some other ones and they all seem to work really good for me, so. All right, well, let's hear what your Strike Zone Northeast region's up to, Tommy. Well, hey, guys, you know what? First of all, congrats to you guys and the crew and everybody involved for 400 episodes. Man, that's incredible. I'm just happy to be a part of it with you guys, so Hey, you're congrats. the newest member of our team, and we love you. You always have great photos, great reports. You're on point, Tommy. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs> hey, you know what? We've had an awesome run of dolphin fishing here in the Strike Zone Northeast region, and we still got it going on. You know, we couldn't have picked a better time to talk dolphin because there's plenty of them around right now. Typically, the best time of year to catch them in my region is gonna be late April through May, although, you know, you can catch them year round. The charter captains lately have been going into the double digits with the number of dolphin on just about every trip this week, and they've been catching some big ones too. I spoke to Captain Jimmy Laidler from thelegendfishing.com, and he tells me it's still early in the dolphin run right now. So he said, you're probably gonna wanna start by looking for a good tide change with some stacked up weeds anywhere from the ledge out to about 1500 feet. Now, as we get later into the spring, those fish are gonna move inside the ledge, even near shore along some of the wrecks and reefs. You know, ballyhoo is the bait of choice. Captain Jimmy likes to rig his ballyhoo with a seven knot hook, an 80 to 100 pound fluorocarbon, along with the eight to half ounce chin weight. Now he'll also run one or two Moldcraft chuggers along with his naked ballyhoo, and you know, guys, Dave from Strike Zone told me they sell those same chuggers pre-rigged. So if you want to make it simple, swing by the shop, pick up a few of those, and you're ready to go. And now Captain Jimmy also said you want to set yourself in a position where you control to the north, so you're going to cover more ground with the tide. And he said he likes to be moving right around seven and a half knots or so. Now I've got a photo here. Captain Jimmy Layler sent me this photo of Asher Heath with a nice dolphin he caught aboard the legendary out of St. Augustine. And if that's not pure stoke face, I don't know what not is. That's an awesome fish there. Stoke after. face, stoke I face. like it. Pure. Tell me about the cobias, Tommy. <laughs> you guys, the cobia craze is still going strong throughout the region. You know, the water's been warming up really quick and, with mo and most of the fish are now gonna be in the more northern part of the region. The reports that I've been getting are that most of the manta rays really haven't had a whole lot of fish on them, but if you put in some time, you do have a good chance of seeing a few cobia. And there's also been some free swimmers and some fish hanging on the tide lines at pretty much all the area inlets. Look for some of those cobia to stick around hanging out in the bait pods as things continue to warm up over the next few weeks. Now moving inshore, you know, we have a great redfish tide this weekend. That early morning high tide is a great time to bust out the skitter walk for some redfish. The finger mullet are all over the flats and they're right along the grass lines on that higher tide stage. Look for those schools of mullet and I promise you, you're gonna find some hungry redfish. 
Now we also have another negative low tide in the afternoons, and that's gonna have the redfish stacked up in the creek holes and along the edges of the ICW throughout the region. Live and cut mullet, as well as mud minnows have been working well for those low tide fish. I've got another picture here. This is Vicki Allen with a nice redfish that she caught with me on one of those negative low tides right there along the ICW on a shell bar. Now also the trout bite has been great this week throughout the region. Just like with the redfish, early morning top water has been really good. But you know, my clients have also been catching quite a few trout on the saltwater assassin little boss paddle tail in the Houdini color. Now I just pair that up with one of their quarter ounce jig heads. And you know, all you need to do is just cast that out, slowly reel it in. You know, it's easy stuff, but the trout really love it. Look for those fish to be hanging on shell and grass points early in the morning on the higher tide and then they're gonna move out to the deeper drop-offs as the sun gets higher up in the sky. There's also been good numbers of silver trout on the near shore wrecks out of St. Augustine. The pier barge has been a hot spot for those guys. Live shrimp on either a jig head or a fish finder rig is the way to go to those fish, for those fish. And I've got one last picture here. This is Sabra Moniz with a big gator trout she caught with Captain Chris Herrera from palmcoastfishing.com on one of those saltwater assassin paddle tails. And guys, I think there's a couple people there from the, the Northeast region, the audience tonight. So don't party too hard without me, all right? <laughs> all right, man, we got the fish bites guys in the house. Thanks so much, Tommy, great report. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Northeast region. He says, inshore, go to Pine Island and St. Augustine for redfish and trout early in the morning. Toss Rapala skitter walks around the schools of mullet along the grass lines and then offshore dolphin throughout the region from the ledge and out and look for those solid weed lines, Bree. Everyone looks so happy on Tommy's boat, always in those always. pictures. He's great. All right, let's set our sights on CCA Star for all of our dolphin anglers. Listen up, catch the first tag dolphin and win $10,000. You can win other great prizes for catching non tag dolphin this summer as well. And if you enter a photo of your catch in the Tigers Outriggers Dolphin Division, you can win a Yamaha one 15 motor and Tiger's Top Mount XC Outrigger package for first place. So go get registered at CCAFloridaStar.com. All right, we're taking another walk down memory lane and seeing where the Florida Insider Fishing Report started, talking with our television family from Fox Sports Sun and seeing what the Bell Central East Region Dolphin Report is like for the weekend. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors for all for less. Soft Science, Supreme Comfort Footwear, Real Legends, exclusively at Bells. Okuma, Inspired Fishing, Discover Crystal River, Florida, and Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 offshore four strokes. For those that like their V6 lighter, faster, and stronger, setting new standards for power, efficiency, speed, and lightweight. Built for the rigors of offshore boating, packed with Yamaha's legendary reliability. And now Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 four strokes offer a choice between digital or mechanical controls to match your rigging preference. Yamaha, reliability starts here. How do you aim a 36-yard shot with a 30-yard fixed pin at a 15-degree angle with a 7-inch holdover without moving a single pin? Easy. You get one of these. Zero. The auto-ranging digital bow sight. 
from Garmin. We are back at the CCA workbench for the Academy Rigs and Techniques. But today we're not talking about uh, rigs and techniques. We're talking about the long journey to our 400th episode. And I still remember when I first time I walked into that Universal Studios and that I walked around the corner and there was this magnificent set with all these giant monitors in there and the cool lights and everything was just amazing. And I thought to myself, I'm in trouble. These people are taking this stuff way too serious. <laughs> I'm, there's no, <laughs> I'm in trouble. And you know, I just like to thank you for the for the ride. It's been great. Uh, I, I hope we can do 400 more, and it's just, you know, great to be a part of it. I really appreciate it. Well, I really do. It's been my pleasure, you know, Dave, and to do, I learned so much from the stuff you do over here at the workbench, like the Nico rig and how we do different all stolen. types of- It's all stolen, it all stuff I steal. It doesn't matter how we got there, <laughs> but the point is you do a great job day in and day out, and more importantly, since day one, this has been your little house and you've done a great job of keeping it nice and clean this week and uh -huh. uh, and keeping it painted and you <laughs> do a good me. job that's not and i appreciate you, know you very much but i, I think, appreciate it are we supposed to go to the yeah we've got a, we've got a little video that we put together for us to take a peek at to show us our little journey i stole your thunder every yeah time. you do sorry let's yeah, try to do that <laughs> And welcome to the Chevy Florida Fishing Report on Sun Sports. It's good to have you along with Captain Rick Murphy. I'm Whit Watson. Year number two brings eight regional reports up from seven. 90 minutes, customized weather tickers for every region, all right here in the next hour and a half on Sun Sports. The editor of Marlin Magazine, Dave Farrell, who fortunately doesn't bring stinky stuff this week, fake. but instead some fake stuff. Fake, fake, fake. And uh, some new toys this week, I hope, as well? Yeah, we got a bunch of cool stuff to look at. Well, our theme fish is Cobia, a close cousin to the remora, or the shark sucker. So you'll find Cobia often following rays, turtles, and sharks. And Rick, like dolphin last week, Cobia have an annual migration on both coasts. Talk about that a little bit. That's what are these yellow balls about? Be gentle with the balls. Just be gentle. <laughs> it's awesome. But make sure you don't throw them over the boat. You know, put them in a nice bag or something. It's like a clown thing to me. I just get fascinated by how this thing works. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of like I'm gonna this one. I'm going to try to hit free. Watch. Oh, God. Dave, turn the thing right side there. up. That's there so one. sad. Turn yeah, the well, thing right side up, man. You don't ever shoot that. This no, isn't the no, hood, dude. No, you, you don't shoot a this. sling no, they shot told like me, that. They told Allow me to introduce to everyone Bree Gabrielle, your brand new co-host of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome, Bree. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Got a new house, a new girl. I feel like I've been in a divorce or something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what happened? Dun. Okay, sorry, I had to do that. We got producers driving boats and taking cash checks. I love it. Hope good luck with that, Nicole. I hope you win that. Brian, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, here Rick. Appreciate you helping us. us. It's time to hear from, oh my gosh, Andy <laughs> Newman. Yeah. He's you know, here. <laughs> it's much better to be with you on studio than Aww. it is on the phone. That's for sure. That's for sure. Charlie, you guys make the Pathfinder boat land, uh, as well as Maverick and Hughes. Absolutely, yeah, people require a lot out of their boat, bay boats these days, and this boat delivers. Hey guys, what's up, man? I'm so stoked that we're back. Thank you so much, well, and we're looking you. forward to working with you for the next six right. months. Ready, dance off! Come on, Woo! come on. We'll see you guys next Everybody's week. Already. Thank you. We make memories here on the Florida Insider hey, Fishing Report. We'll see Thank you guys you next so week. Much, guys. Thanks for tuning in. So joining me here is my friend Steve Tello, the general manager of Fox Sports Sun. And Steve, 25 years with Sportsman's, and more importantly, 400 episodes tonight, the Florida Insider Fishing Report. What do you think as a general manager? You've seen it, a lot of things happen. Well, Rick, it's a celebration tonight for you and for your crew. Uh, the production that you've put out, almost 1,600 replays, 400 shows tonight. Uh, it's quite a feat. and. Uh, the information that you give, the sponsors' support, uh, and uh, the real fishermen that are out there calling in and telling the rest of us novices on the weekend where to go, it's terrific. It's a, it's a real tribute to you. Well, thank you so much. You know, without having a network partnership like we've had, you know, we've aired Sportsman's Adventures on your network alone, 3,900 airings. And again, you guys were there when outdoor programming on that network was, there was one sh sh one show, and then we became the second. And, and then after that, yeah. it turned into 16 and so on. Well, and you've grown it, and you've, you've grown it. It's been terrific to see how uh, a local programming in our state has grown, and uh, we've moved it to other places also. Yeah, 
here's a, a few cool photos of some of the old crew and man what a great time the only thing bad about that show was having to travel drive to orlando every thursday for me and then drive home so that i could be home on a friday night or friday to do my charter but you know what we took over in 2009 and we've moved it here to to Miami and it's an awesome thing and we really appreciate your support. Well, thank you, Rick, and thank the crew. You guys do a wonderful job every week. We couldn't have done it without thank you. Thank you, man. All right, Bree, we've got some more reports to go and I go. I know you got one of my guys over there, so let's take yes, it away. Yes, I do. Well, there are so many surprises in the studio tonight. And what do you know? We have our Belt Central East Region Captain Jim Ross here ready to give his report. Hi, Jim. Welcome. I, I, it's, it's a pleasure to be back here. It's been a while. I'm glad to be back. And uh, I tell you, if you're fishing in the Central East Region, you've seen this week and pa the past weeks, you've seen a lot of waves of fish come through. We haven't had a consistent bite this, this last week. Um, but what we're looking forward to is with this consistent east wind that we have, coming on right now we're really looking for those weed lines to start stacking up bunch of scattered weed out there so it's going to be really good looking forward to it did i just walk through your shot yeah what that's a okay. dumb eight it's okay. <laughs> you know what it's your 400 so but i thought we'd already gone to i thought we'd already gone to b-roll that's live tv ladies and gentlemen and if you know what that's how it works that's how we do it around here so, so, so tell us about so that. so going oh, back okay. to the dolphin uh you know the bite right now outside of about 150 feet that's where it's really the best and if you can get to the east side of the gulf stream those of you that have boats large enough enough fuel capacity to get there that's where you really need to be because that's where the biggest fish are being being caught right now it seems like they're switching over from the east side of the stream over to the west side of the stream right around the Daytona area because they're coming in on the west side of the stream in Tommy's area but down in our area you really have to get out into the stream or to the east side of the stream to catch the fish or at least the biggest fish right now and I've got a picture here uh, Eric Edwards sent me this, this picture and he and Mike Crago caught this uh, central east peanut dolphin, we'll call it, uh, <laughs> in the uh, in our Bell Central East region. That's that's the ones we call peanuts in the Bell Central East region. We like we like them, you know. We like our we like our dolphin, and that one right there is gonna make some nice fish fingers. I can it tell will. you. Now we've also got a bunch of sharks, and the central east region of the state isn't called the shark bite capital of the world for nothing. <laughs> we have plenty of sharks there right now, guys and gals. Uh, in fact, we had another shark bite at New Smyrna this past week. So if you're looking to tangle with some sharks, you don't have to go far. All you got to do is just kind of go out to the beach and you know get yourself some stout wire, some some heavy tackle, throw a chunk of bait out there or a live bait if you want to, and you can probably get a pretty quick response from Jaws Jr. right now. Um, black tips, spinners, bulls, black nose, fine tooth. Uh, even my buddy uh, Captain Mark Gibson, even from, from NaughtyDiverCharters.com, is even reporting there's hammerheads off of the Daytona Beach, uh, be off of Daytona and, and New Smyrna Beach right now. So if, variety. If, if you're looking for them, <laughs> we got them. And you want to do battle with them, they're there. It's just a matter of being able to get out there once these seas calm down. Tell us about the snook, Jimmy. Snook bite has been getting much more consistent, Rick. Uh, you know, this week, Ponce Inlet in particular, I've gotten much, much better reports. The guys up there are doing good with pinfish. Sebastian's been really good. Maharas, man, Maharas have been just crushing it down at Sebastian. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, was, was down there fishing off the jetty the other day and just did a fantastic job. Uh, catch, I think they said they had 14 or 15 off the jetty Whoa. using Mahar. So that's a pretty good bite considering he's a land-based angler. Um, the other things that you can use up in and around the, the Spoil Islands and the creeks that are flowing out of the Sebastian Grant Wabasso area is live pilchards and they're starting to come inside both them and the greenies. Coming in right now you can jig them up with a R and R tackle sabiki rig and then free line them back out or use a real light weight if you're in the inlet and that current gets real heavy especially on these negative tides that we're going to have on this new, this full moon or this new moon that's coming up we're going to get a lot of negative tides a lot of water flowing a little bit of split shot just to kind of keep them down it's going to really help and then the last species i've got speckled trout you know this past full moon we talked about it about we were going to have a good spawn and we did have a good spawn we're seeing a lot of sunken bellies right now that's a fantastic thing to see because you know the central east region of the state has had some water quality issues over the past four or five years we have not had very strong uh, sea trout spawning activity and this year's the first year that we've started to see some good strong responses from those those fish especially around that april uh, time frame when we need to see a heavy spawn because that's going to create our fish for next spring. 
So those egg bearing females, if you still get, catch one that's got eggs in it, put it back in the water. Um, if they've already spawned out and you guys feel like keeping one, you know, then now's more the time to keep them now that they've had a chance to do their thing. Small lures, live shrimp seem to be working real well. Fish around the mullet pods. We're still having a hard time getting them to bite bigger baits right now. Three, four, five weeks ago, skitter walks, they were crushing them. Now, little stuff, little tiny baits, you know, little assassins like the little four inch sea shad's doing really good. And if you're fishing in clear water, you want to use something that's got a blue tint to it, a blue fleck or a blue tint. So the silver mullet color in the saltwater assassin uh, sea shad or the, um, this, the gray ghost color, fantastic color right now, Rick, uh, in those clear water areas. You get a little dirty water. Drunk monkey, mud bug, some of those darker ones, golden brim, those seem to be working really well. And I've got another picture here um, that Eric Edwards also sent me. This guy's all over the place. I mean, he's 90 miles offshore one day catching peanut dolphin and, you know, the 60 pound peanuts. And the next day he's in here taking Spence Wise to a, a really, really nice gator trout. Now, you can see this one has not spawned yet. Right. And uh, that one went back in the water right after a quick photo. I want to say one thing real quick, Rick. All right. 10 years. 10 years I've been on this on this journey with you guys and gals and I tell you what hopefully everybody out there is having a fun time and hopefully everybody out there is learning something every single week I know that when I watch the shows I always learn something and I do it every day so hopefully it's helping you guys it's helping. and you've been a huge ambassador thank you great yes, report from the Central East Bells region we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots Jimmy says this weekend you gotta go offshore shark they're all along the beaches use chunk baits like bluefish bonita Spanish mackerels for the sharks up to 150 pounds and then go snook fishing they're all at the sebastian inlet you might want to use a live mahara or croaker free line near those jetties right jimmy that's exactly right all right we've got more surprises coming up here on the florida insider fishing report our friends from maverick boat group are here and your bell southwest region captain is up next and remember to be informed on all things fishing in florida make sure to visit our website like us on facebook follow us on twitter watch us on youtube and check us out on instagram we'll be right back the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala, another great day. Startron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Yeti, built for the wild. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. And Strike Zone Fishing. Titan and Titan XD Diesel from Harbor Trucks has America's best truck warranty, five years, 100,000 mile bumper to bumper, and can tow up to 12,000 pounds. Harbor Trucks has the largest selection of Titan XD and Titan in Florida, starting at $29,000. Harbor Trucks is conveniently located halfway between Tampa and Naples. Harbor Trucks, the place to buy. You can either stay busy fishing or get busy catching. From Texas to Tampa Bay or Key West to the Carolinas and beyond. For nearly 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Ask for Fish Bites and Fish Bites Fight Club lures by name or visit fishbites.com. Find Florida's soul and discover Crystal River. Explore warm gulf waters, spring-fed rivers, bountiful lakes, and fantastic fishing. Dive into adventure and enjoy the only place in the world where you can swim with the manatees. Treat yourself and your family to outdoor fun, rich history, and a relaxed coastal lifestyle. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Well, welcome back. And joining me now is Skip Lashon and Charlie Johnson from Maverick Boat Group. And you know, Skip, you guys inherited me from Bob Hughes when Scott bought Bob Hughes boats or Hughes boats uh, in the early 90s. But 93. Yeah. And I have a picture here 
of a boat that you built for me in 1994. Yeah. yeah. That's How crazy it. is that? And that boat's the boat that we fished out of when we were over in the Bahamas bone fishing just a few months ago. I can't thank you guys enough. It's been such an honor to represent this company. Well, it's been an honor to have you too, Rick. And on behalf of everybody with Maverick Boat Group, I want to thank you. It's been a 25-year journey. It's been a great journey. We've enjoyed it. You've done a great job conservation-wise, promotion-wise. It, it's just a real pleasure to work with you. And congratulations on 25 years. Well, thank you. You know, Charlie, is there anything that Maverick's got in the hopper that you might want to tell us about something cool? <laughs> we something we always have a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> oh, we're boy, doing, oh, we're boy. We're doing really well with the, a number of the, the models we have out right now. So, um, yeah, just keep an eye out, and uh, you'll see it coming. You know, we have some boat shows coming up, so you'll see some good stuff coming. All right, Charlie, you know, Skippy gets all the good stuff, you know? So I want to make sure that in front of Skip, so that he can't say we snuck around behind him, I want to personally invite you to come down and go into Everglades National Park and we'll film a sports adventure. Now we're talking. There ah, you go. Uh, 25 years later. There you go. See, <laughs> see how you Thank are. You. Oh, yes. well. Well, maybe Appreciate we'll it. take you with us. There Skippy. we go. There right. we'll, we'll leave him out. Home. All right. Well, Bree, we've got something else to do. you got a good looking guy standing next to you. So where do we go yes, next? Yes, we do. I'm standing next to another one of the fantastic original four, Ronnie Houston, who's always on top of your Bell Southwest region bite. Happy 400, Ronnie. Well, it's been a pleasure and it's been a journey. And it's uh, been a journey of memories and a general, uh, journey of passion. So I'm grateful to be here since day one and looking forward to many more. You know, uh, dolphin in the region, it's not something typical that we do target. But, you know, if you do get out, you want to start normally looking for these fish in depths of about 100 to 120 feet, according to my captain down in the southwest region, Mike Avenon. He's also telling me that you're really not looking for debris. When you get out, you want to look for birds or you want to look for scattered weed. But it's also good to look for scattered weed with a variety of bait involved. Now, when you get out there doing this, you want to have a couple pitch rigs. There's been a couple times I've run out with him and his contender, and we were actually going grouper fishing. We're going out to get set up, and the dolphin just appeared. So have a couple pitch rigs, whether it be bucktails or some cut, cut squid when these schoolies get around. It's not the, the uh, dolphin that you might catch on the East Coast. Most of these dolphins are small, you know, four to five pound range, but you can get a limit of them and they continue to get out and get group proficient, but it's not something common we do. But if you do, those are some of the tips to get you going. Now also in the Southwest region, we, uh, cobia bite's been great. Now I'm getting reports all through the region from, from the South End down in Everglades National Park, up in the middle end of the region, up in Naples, from Captain Steve from the Misbehaven. Captain Brian Sanders down south, and a new addition to the arsenal up north, Captain Corey McGuire. They're all telling me you want to concentrate right now on fishing wrecks and artificial reefs in the Collier County area, anywhere from about five to 30 miles out. They're also telling when you get out in these areas, some of these fish are scattered, but some of these wrecks you get on, they are fully schooled up. Most of the baits that they're catching these fish on right now are large live baits, whether it be herring, pinfish, pilchards, or Nothing works best than a live, uh, I mean, an artificial swim bait on top because he's telling me some of these pods are on top of the water. All three captains have telling me in the last week and a half, the cobia bite has picked up great. And I've got a couple great pictures of Kobe that was caught down south and a Kobe that was caught in the middle of the region with Captain Steve in the misbehaving and always Captain Brian Sanders down south in the Everglades region. Now on the inshore side, something a little different. We always talk about the snook, the reds and the tarpon. Black drum bite, Captain Jim Fortman out of Port of the Islands has been telling me that you want to concentrate on the outer Gulf Islands right now, anywhere south of Coon Key, all the way down towards Indian Key, but then also up in the middle bays, anywhere between Gaskin and Rabbit Key grasses. Now on the outside, the water's been clean. He's telling me you'll see clean water out there and you might start seeing big mud clouds. Those are big schools of black drum right now in the 15 to 40 pound range. He's telling me get out there, get ahead of these fish. You want to either use brown bucktails tipped with shrimp, live shrimp, or something similar to a bass assassin, four inch sea shad in root beer in the darker color, getting in those muds. I've got a couple great pictures right now of some uh, black drum that were caught with Captain Jim Fortman. Those are some good quality fish and a good fight right now on light tackle. Now, the last report I have is the tarpon. Right now, the tarpon are all through the region. They're really starting to show up good down in Boca Grande, but guys, don't think they're not down in the southern end of the region. Reports I'm getting right now are from Coon Key, 
south to Indian Key. Now, I've seen some guys when I've been out there snook fishing, sitting in the normal places, setting up for these tarpon, but don't be surprised if some of these fish are sitting on the points, like maybe Stop Keys, Tiger Key, Camp Lulu. Guys aren't fishing those areas. They're fishing the troughs. I've personally seen these fish out in some of those areas. But also, up in the northern end of the region, they're starting to show up on the beaches and the passes right now from Sanibel all the way to Boca Grande. We're supposed to have some west winds coming in over the weekend, so if the beaches get too rough, concentrate your efforts on the inside, anywhere from Sanibel up towards Foster's or Rocky Channel in the Pine Island region. Also, York Key back to Pine Island Marina. There's generally tarpon right now showing up there. Like I said, if the weather picks up and it gets rough, get on the inside. Ronnie, what do you think? We're going to use a bass assassin swim bait for those guys? You know what? The swim baits for the cobias and the swim baits for the tarpons, you can use something like a shiner uh, die dapper 5-inch or a black mullet die dapper. But the, simply put it on a uh, jig head, quarter ounce jig head, present these baits ahead of these fish and bring them to them. I'll tell you what, that bass assassin die dapper is really hard to beat. Thank you, bud. You did a great job. Great yes, report did. from the Bell Southwest region. Got a Keeping couple of requests. Sense. You do? A uh, couple uh, of requests. What are they? It's been a while since yeah. we shot a Sportsman Adventures. Oh, boy. Even though we both run different, different bay boats, we both run a motor that's dependable and reliable. Yes, So we, we can get out and do a show with a Sportsman Adventures. And one thing I want to tell you, yes, one sir. of the greatest memories I do have of you is the three days we were down in Chubb fishing out of Murphy's Law, just you and me, three days straight, all day long, every two or three drops, snappers, Jack. Jack. groupers, catching plenty of fish, but back then your boys Aww. were like this. Now look at them. All right, well thank you job. so much. Stay here with me. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the Caddy Can Hotspots from the Bell Southwest region. He says inshore, Pompano, Bird Key to Pavilion Key, fish the areas of grass and the outer gulf points with current using tube jigs, bucktails tipped with shrimp, and four inch root beer bass assassin sea shad. And then offshore, permit stump pass to Matanzas Pass, fishing wrecks with a moderate weather, of course, using live crabs, tube jigs, and bucktails tipped. Try seven to 25 miles out. That's a little ways out there, don't you think? I Ruth? love having the captains here. Okay, we are getting closer to our big party for the CCA Homestead Banquet and auction Thursday, May 16th at the Homestead Miami Speedway. The fun begins at 6 p.m. with a live auction, raffle, silent auction, and open bar. Tickets are going fast, so get them now at ccaflorida.org. All right, let's say hi and a big congrats to a fifth or fantastic four member, Pat or Patty Pants or Pat Tar, Deneen in the Yeti Panhandle region. I'm bringing out all the nicknames today. Hey, Pat. Hey, Bree, 400 seasons, unbelievable. But uh, I tell you what, dolphin season in the Panhandle, it begins mid to late May, runs through September, and just like anywhere, it's often associated with floating debris or grass. And based on what I'm hearing, we're, we may have an epic grass year offshore, which should translate to a good dolphin season and blue water fishing season in general. Satellite services like Hilton's rip charts are critical to finding the productive water, as is developing a reliable network of offshore anglers you can share information with. If you find the edges where green water meets blue water, where temperature breaks occur, where opposing currents collide, you will find the bait and floating debris and conditions that make for good dolphin fishing. Troll skirted naked ballyhoo and have some spinning rigs ready with jigs or live bait capitalize on a boom or bust situation where obviously you go, holy cow, look at all the dolphin fish that came out from underneath that raft of grass. Dolphin in the panhandle can run from uh, little peanuts to, to punishers. The largest we have caught up here off of uh, the boat I was on was 55 pounds. And there's a photo from way back in the day with Captain Rick. He, yeah. That's a dolphin we caught on the out of here in 2007. Uh, we fished the whole Murphy clan on board the out of here that weekend, caught a bunch of dolphins. Believe it or not, I was carrying a uh, little boy called around on my shoulders that weekend, but that's not ever going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that, Pat Tar. Hey, why don't uh, you tell well, me about the mackerel? Rig, the king mackerel are starting to show up along the break in 160 to 200 foot of water, and quite a few smokers have also been caught from the uh, Panhandle piers. The bait has showed up, the cigar minnows, the herrings. Uh, so before you head offshore, to be kept alive, well full of baits. And be sure to free line one down current while bottom fishing. Use medium to heavy spinning tackle rig with a wire leader and a stinger rig where you got a nose hook on the, on a bait and then a treble hook mid body somewhere. The offshore kings are running 15 to 20 pounds. And the ones being caught up here, are, some of them are pushing 30 pounds. Uh, there have also been a few black tunas caught and occasional cobia caught while guys uh, free lining a bait uh, behind the boat while they're, while they're uh, bottom fishing. Moving inshore. The pompano bite is still really good throughout the Yeti Panhandle beaches. 
set fishermen using multiple rigs and two hook chicken rigs baited with sand fleas, fresh shrimp, or fish bite strips, and the sand flea colors are, are getting their limits. Uh, if you're going to set fish, find an area where the outer bar pinches to the beach, fish that pinch point or just west of it. We have been also using the trolling motor with the boat, just easing along that first sand bar, sight fishing with yellow, white, or chartreuse jigs and having good success. 10 to 20 pound fluorocarbon leaders on your jigs will uh, will get you more pompano bites, but you might lose a few jigs to bluefish and ladyfish. And then there's a photo of Andrew Poole from Houston with one of the fly caught pompanos he caught with me this week using a chartreuse uh, clouser. And then finally inshore, the red fishing remains really consistent throughout the panhandle. Slot fish are in the bays and, and then the jumbos are along the beaches and the bays fish structure, both natural and artificial bottom. Natural bottom look for that patchy sand grass areas in two to three feet of water. Cast soft plastic spoons and switch baits. Uh, fishing around the docks, it's hard to beat a live bait on a Carolina rig. Use a live shrimp, a spot minnow, a filtered, or a peanut menhaden. Along the beaches, you're going to find schools of slot fish and also schools of those 20 to 30 pounders. A free line cigar minnow on the beach is a slam dunk, but you can also use a light cap- colored bass assassin bait on a jig head or a worm hook that works really good. All right, thank you so much, Pat. You've been with us since day one. We appreciate you more than you know. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Yeti Panhandle region. Inshore, pompano fishing remains solid throughout the Panhandle. Use sand fleas on set rigs from the beach. And then offshore, daytime swordfish at the spur and the steps target bottom breaks in 1,200 to 1,600 feet of water. That's a little over my head, Bree. Oh, I think it's a lot over your head. Okay, we have <laughs> one last captain in the Fish Bites East region to reminisce with, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Harbor Trucks. Visit harbortrucks.com. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Suffix, always use the best line. The IGFA, fish for the world. Sportsman's Adventures, fishing for adventure. And Bells, everything you need to live life local. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Life out here tastes sweeter with the freedom to roam at 40 miles per hour, the power to haul whatever needs hauling, and best-in-class acceleration and handling with cargo. The new gas-powered Kubota Sidekick is purpose-built for speed, fun, and to get the job done right. Now, get the new Kubota Sidekick for zero down and payments as low as $196 a month. Find a Kubota dealer near you at GoKubota.com. Remember the glory days of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. Harbor Trucks has the largest selection of new and used car and truck inventory in Southwest Florida. Our used vehicle inventory goes through a 120 point inspection process performed by certified technicians. Exclusive to Florida Insider Fishing Report viewers is our peace of mind Harbor Truck warranty. If you don't see what you're looking for, give us a call and we can get it for you. Go to harbortrucks.com and click on the Florida Insider Fishing Report tab. Today's Power Pole Tip of the Week is about the new and improved bracket for the 8-foot blade. Now, the 10-foot blade has always had this heavy-duty bracket, and it's because it's been so well-received that we've decided now for 2019 to change the bracket on the 8-foot blade. So we have this heavy-duty bracket now as part of your 8-foot blade. 
The reason why I really like this is because it comes with all these plastic covers. So it encompasses all of your hydraulic hoses, but more importantly, in fishing situations, there's a lot of things back here on the boat that you could potentially lose a fish on, whether it's a trim tab or a prop. But guess what? Power Pole has done their job to make sure that there's nothing there for your line to get hung up on and potentially lose your fish. So if you're thinking about getting a new set of poles or upgrading your poles, think about the new eight foot blade. It has all those sleek designs and comes in a variety of different colors. And that's today's Power Pole Tip of the Week. Okay, last but not least is one of our Fantastic Four OGs, Captain Mike Holliday in the Fish Bites East region. Mike, what's going on this weekend? You know, I feel 400 episodes old, too. <laughs> but, you know, we're getting those southeasterly breezes that bring that bait closer to shore, and it also brings the dolphin to the western edge of the Gulf Stream. Well, it seems like the largest fish are caught on the roughest days. This is the time of year that you can troll the weed line, the rips, and the current edges, and pick up dolphin to 30 pounds or more. Every May, we see those 40 and 50 pound, 50 pound fish caught as well, and, and there's been a lot caught in the last week. So. This is a really good time to go a little heavier on your gear and make sure you have at least, you know, 30 pound tackle on, and a lot of line in every rod. Might be even better to bump up the 50 pound tackle. You can troll rig ballyhoo on 60 to 100 pound monofilament leader. You can slow troll live bait or even do that running gun, you know, just looking for diving birds or something floating. Uh, you should have at least one big bait in the mix, like a 12 inch double hook mullet or a horse ballyhoo with an Islander combination just in case that big fish comes into the spread. Look for the best action to be at 100 feet of water on out to about 400 feet. Uh, that's where the bottom rolls down and the current seems to stack up the weeds the best. Average dolphin's gonna be eight to 18 pounds. I got a photo of a dolphin there. That's Marlon Wakeman uh, with a nice dodo. He caught that fish off Stewart on a trolled ballyhoo. The other thing we've got, we've got that new moon coming up on Saturday and that'll crank up the mutton snapper bites that's been pretty steady since the last full moon. So places like the Six Mile Reef, the Sand Pile, the Loran Tower Ledge, and the Roll Down Off Jupiter, they're all producing good mutt bites right now. Uh, if you can find the kingfish schools, the muttons are under the kings. They're eating those baits that the kings cut in half and that sink to the bottom. Seems to be right around that same edge as the Roll Down. Uh, and we're starting to see the Spanish sardines showing up off Palm Beach County and the pilchers and thread fins of Martin and St. Lucie counties. But if you're really looking to catch a big mutton, it's pretty hard to beat a grunt plug or a grunt belly. Keep in mind that muttons don't like to sit on top of the reef. They like to be out there in the sand, so anchor a little away from it. Average mutton's going to be 5 to 10 pounds. All right, let's go inshore, bub. Well, there's a nice flounder run taking place in Jensen Beach around the Jensen Beach Pier and the catwalks of the Jensen Beach Causeway. Also around the Mosquito Bridge uh, around Jensen Causeway. And if you run up to Fort Pierce, there's a, there's a flounder bike going around a little gym bridge and on North Bridge in Fort Pierce. It seems like the best fishing is tight to the pilings, really close to shore. Like, you know, around the pilings, close to shore. That's where the flounder are posted up and they're picking off the food from those, the bait schools, juvenile greenies that are around those, those uh, pipes and, and around the, the pole. The key, keep your bait on the bottom so you can rig with 40 pound monofilament leader, a half ounce rubber core sinker, and, you know, put that about four inches above, uh, like a 2-0 BMC circle hook, paid up with a live shrimp, a sand perch, a finger mullet, or a killifish. You can also bounce the bottom with an all-white saltwater assassin curly tail jig. Uh, you know, these are smaller fish than what we see in the summer. Most are in that one to four pound range. There are some big ones. I got a photo there. That's Scott Oster. Uh, he was fishing around Sailfish Point with his brother Gary, and they picked up that nice flounder on a shrimp and jig. Now, we're also starting to see more big fish showing up in their staging areas close to the inlets. That's before they'll move uh, next month into the, to the inlets for the summer spawn. These big fish are keyed in on mullet. So, you know, a, a live 8 to 10 inch silver mullet or a mullet head on the bottom or a top water plug, those are going to get your big fish bites on the seawalls around the Loctahatchee River, around Old Port Cove. Uh, up in the North Fork of the St. Lucie River and around the mouth of Taylor Creek in Fort Pierce. There was a big push of male fish into the inlets this week. So if you're just looking for action, you can work the South Jetty in Fort Pierce or the, uh, the south side of the St. Lucie Inlet or around the Coast Guard Station in Jupiter and catch plenty of those sub-slot fish. 
There's also a good uh, time right now to work the bridges on the windy night, throw in a saltwater assassin Alabama rig, uh, you know, with a stack of five inch sea shads on it uh, in the mullet colors or, you know, uh, throw a chartreuse, red tail hawk jig down the shadow line. That'll work as well, as well as swimming plugs, uh, the Jensen Beach Causeway and the Lake Worth Bridge. Those are good options for that. Average snook right now, four to 10 pounds, but fish to 25 pounds are being caught. And, uh, you know, might be a little throwback in that picture right there, Rick. Tell me about that hat you got going. Ooh. Oh, man, that's where I serve my uh, salsa and chips. That was the pro trim <laughs> plastic hat. But boy, when it rained, I was never wet. It never dribbled down the back of my neck. So it anyway. It's some shade, too. You're looking good, <laughs> looking good. Hey, tell me about the bass fishing, bub. Okay, well, so water levels are down to about two feet on Lake, Lake Tahoe right now. And that's got the larger bass push offshore and out into the deeper areas of the lake. I was talking to Captain Steve Nymiller of BassOnline.com. He's averaging 15 to 25 bass a trip, working to submerge pockets of hydrilla in at least four feet of water out on Lake Toho. If artificials are your game, at first light, you can throw a watermelon, red glitter colored worm with an eighth ounce weight, or throw, you know, shad colored topwater plug. Once the sun gets up, it's time to go to live shiners and work the edges of the grass. The entire body is now deep. If you got a lot of wind, you can get up in Goblet's Cove, throw a spinnerbait, a white spinnerbait with a chrome blade and a, a chrome and a willow leaf colored uh, gold blade and do well on the bass. Toho's fish are small, but the big fish are there up to six pounds. All right, Mike, thank you. Great report from the Fish Bites East region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the TH Marine hotspots. Mike says inshore, Pompano in the surf off of the southern Hutchinson Island. Use uh, clam scented fish bites and sand flea combinations. And then offshore, kingfish and mutton snappers on the Loran Tower ledge. Use live or dead sardines, cigar minnows, or maybe a thrip fit. Hey, you know, everything old is new again. I think we should bring back the shorts, the mustache, and the hat. I can do, do the mustache. I can do the hair, Bree. Or the shorts. Oh, I could do the shorts. I could pull <laughs> the, the shorts. shorts off. Come on, man. I was a 28-inch waist then. Now I'm a little little bigger than that. It's all right. You're still looking 32. good. That's all you're getting. All Dang. right. Well, we've done it. We've brought Hold you through 25 years of sportsman adventures, 400 episodes of the Florida Insider Fishing Report, and got you rock star reports for your weekend on the water. When we return, we're telling you what we're fishing for next week, so stay tuned. Titan and Titan XD Diesel from Harbor Trucks has America's best truck warranty, five years, 100,000 mile bumper to bumper, and can tow up to 12,000 pounds. Harbor Trucks has the largest selection of Titan XD and Titan in Florida, starting at $29,000. Harbor Trucks is conveniently located halfway between Tampa and Naples. Harbor Trucks, the place to buy. Master your most challenging offshore experience with confidence and ease with Yamaha Helmmaster. Precise, intuitive control on the open sea. Unrivaled ease for maneuvering and docking in port. And now Setpoint adds three new dimensions to boat control. Maintain boat position with fish point, or a position and heading with stay point, or a heading while you drift with drift point. Yamaha Helmmaster, now with Setpoint. Complete digital control for today's larger offshore boats. For the bass that thinks it's a bulldog. For the walleye that thinks it's a freight train. For the tuna that thinks it's a torpedo. For the tarpon that thinks it's a tarpon. You need the mono that thinks it's a braid. Suffix Advance. New advanced mono with HMPE braid molecules for strength, abrasion resistance, and low stretch. Suffix Advance. The mono that thinks it's a braid.
Make sure to tune in next week because we are talking all about the tarpon. All right, Rick, tonight was all about celebrating you and your legacy of 25 years of sportsman adventures and 400 episodes on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. You've been in the hearts and minds of so many over the years, allowing us all to make the best fishing memories of our lives. But that wouldn't have been possible without all of our generous sponsors, loyal fans, and our amazingly talented crew. So thank you all for the love and support over the years. And thank you, Rick, for all that you have contributed to the world of fishing. It's been a great Great you know, show. it's not very often I'm speechless, but it's pretty close right now. You know, it's just uh, <laughs> awesome to be that guy. And uh, you are that guy. You're making <laughs> you're making a stand here in the world of fishing. And we all I know we all think we've all learned so much from you. Um, you know, I never worked a day in my of... life. Re I mean, we really work. But, you know, when you get up, I saw my stepfather. He, he hated going to work and I didn't want to be that guy. So I picked something that I could really enjoy, and I've never felt like it, like we worked. Even though I got hands that would lie and tell you different, they would argue to death. Yes. You know, so uh, we pulled a lot of times, but you know, we couldn't do it without great partners like yes. Contender and Maverick and Yamaha, and so many and our, of our and sponsors. our viewers and yep. Sun Sports. They were all there for us at the very yep. beginning. So. Well, thank you all for tuning in with us and taking a walk through time, but we will see you next week. We're talking tarpon and have a great weekend fishing. We love you all. Don't forget to watch Sports of the Adventures. Here it comes.